Golf Kingdom new intro in three, two, one. Welcome to the Golf Kingdom. Uh -oh. What the? Oh my gosh! Everybody, for yourselves, let's go. Somebody save Neil. Every man for himself. Okay, I guess we're starting the show. Hey, it's the Golf Kingdom, and let's talk about our show. We're going to begin with the blueprint, as always, and here's what we got going on. We've got Build It right off the bat. Then we're going to go Vogue with pop culture and teach you the poses of the swing. Keep it simple. Strano comes next. And G GFX Fitness with our fitness person, Tiffany Tracy. I'm going to talk nerdy to you, and at the end of the show, we're going to talk chipping and time to rise. Are you ready to go? Things look like they've calmed down because it's time to build here in the Golf Kingdom. Well, that was a pretty chaotic opening to the Golf Kingdom. That new opening didn't quite go as, as the way we planned it, but we've got a fabulous show as you see. And as always, we're beginning with Build It. And I'm going to stay on full swing in this Build It segment. I'm going to hit on three things that are kind of fights in your game, places you can't swing, things you fight against doing in your swing. And like I said, it's going to be all about full swing. We're going to touch on over the top. We're going to touch on coming down properly and not going back in your swing. And also that spinning club head. These are three places you fight against in your game. So let's get ready here. We're going to grab an alignment stick first and a club. And Daredevil, let's come to the wide shot. Let's talk about the first thing you got to fight against doing and that is coming down over the top. So remember, we're here, over the top means the club moves this way, steepens and comes down on the wrong side of the stick. So instead of coming down on the inside of the stick here and coming back to the ball, you come down and you get on the wrong side of the stick right here, and you come across the ball. So if you slicers out there, this is gonna be something that's gonna help you a bunch. Now, you're gonna need a water bottle here to help you keep from coming over the top on this. The water bottle will go right at the back end of your stick right here. Simply stay on this side of the water bottle when you swing. So you start here, you come back, you stay on this side of the water bottle coming back, and you come down on this side of the water bottle. If you come down wrong, you're going to slam right into the water bottle and just blow water everywhere. So it'll be a fun little drill. Maybe take the lid off your water bottle so if you hit it, you get a little cool spray of water. So put it down there. Stay on this side of your water bottle as you come back and stay on this side of it as you come down. A real simple drill to do as you build a better swing using an alignment stick and just a water bottle. Now, the next thing we want to work on and focus on is not spinning the club too much as we go back. We don't want that thing to spin around. So I'm going to get the water bottle all the way. I'll leave the alignment stick there. And as I come back, I don't want to spin that club. That's a fight that we can't have. We can't spin that club behind us and turn this too much. However we, much we turn this going back, we've got to turn it coming through. So the second fight is we fight against spinning the face and getting our trail hand underneath. Keep in mind, we want to keep that face calm right here, keep your triangle intact, and don't spin it. Last fight is we don't want to go backwards as we come to the ball. Just like throwing a ball, we move forward, Hitting a golf ball, we move forward. So I'm going to move the alignment stick in the middle here. And as I swing, I'm going to move to this side of the stick and that side of the stick. So I'm set up right here in the middle. I'm going to make sure as I swing back, I move past the stick here. As I swing down, I move in front of the stick. I won't be going backwards. So going backwards, it's not like when you throw a punch, you go backwards. You throw a punch, you go forwards. We're talking about fights. We're talking about build it. Fight against these three things, and you'll hit the ball a lot better when you go practice and play. Oh, yeah. Right there. Yes, Rob. Give it to me. Yes. You were born to be a star, Rob. It's beautiful. Oh, right there. Hey, have you got what you need now? Oh. You got it? Poses. Vogue. I look like I've got it. I've got all the moves. Apparently, we got the pictures we need. Now, let me ask you, do you have the poses you need to play great golf. Daredevil, let's come to the widescreen view here. 
Here's the thing we got to understand. You should be able to look like a tour player standing still all the time. You should be able to nail some simple poses, such as full swing with an iron or driver, chipping, putting, and bunker play. I'm going to take you through them, I and this isn't all skate. Everybody, get off your couch. Get up close to the TV. Get ready, because we're doing this all together. I want you to use your full-length mirrors at home. I want you to use your reflection in the windows. Use your shadows. Whatever you need to use to check your poses. So we're going to start off real simple here. We're going to start off full swing. I'm going to give you a full swing pose, a couple of key checkpoints as you look at it, and as you look at me. So here we go, full swing checkpoint here. My stance is a little wider than my hips. My trail hip, I'm a right-handed golfer. My trail hip, my right hip, will, right hip will be in. Lead shoulder up, trail shoulder down. Hands come together. My lead hand, which is my left hand, is on the inside of my lead leg. It's not over here and it's not back here. So the pose is I'm here, hip in, shoulder up, shoulder down, hands right there. You ought to be able to look like a tour player every time. Rear end out, back fairly straight. You ought to be able to hit this pose, bang, right there. Now, let's go from biggest to smallest. Let's go putting, because the putting setup's pretty close to full swing, except my feet are gonna be what I call the three shoe stance with. Like I could put another shoe between my feet. I'm right here, hip in, shoulder up, shoulder down. Hands will be in virtually the same place. There's your pose for putting. Now, chipping is an opposite thing. So let's go to chipping. Feet are close together. Instead of this hip in, this hip is out. Shoulders and hips level. So I'm right there. There's my pose for chipping. Boom, right here. Shoulders level, hips level. This hip feels like it's pushing out. Stance close together. Hands are right in the middle. Last one is bunker play, which is going to be a kind of a fun one. I want you to imagine you're sitting on a horse. Ready? We're going horseback riding here. So we're on a horse. Here we go. On the horse. Do, 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 do. Right here. Knees are out. Toes are out. Stance is wide. And I'm sitting on the horse right here. Okay? So there's my bunker pose. Now, here we go. We're going to go through them again all together. Ready? Here we go. Everybody up. Here we go. I'm going to call them out. Ready? Pose and putting. Bang. Right there. There's the putting pose. Ready? We're going to pose and bunker play. Bang. Right there. There's the bunker play. I'm ready to hit a bunker shot. Um, Full swing. Here we go. Full swing. Nailed it. Last one, chipping, hip out right there, chipping the poses. Vogue, get in there, practice your poses, then take your poses to the course and use them, and you're gonna look like a tour player out there, and you're gonna hit all these shots correctly when you play. Hey, it's the kiss segment. Mm -hmm. Keep it simple, Strano, and I'm, I'm chomping Cheetos here. I got, I got the Cheetos fingers, and the question is, well, first thing is everybody loves Cheetos fingers. I mean, mmm, mm-hmm, mmm. Yeah, everybody loves Cheetos fingers, but you know what? Cheetos are good to eat, but Cheetos aren't really good for your golf club. And I get players asking me all the time, hey, Rob, I want to be more consistent with my game. And I look at their club base, and it's not clean like that. It's got like Cheetos fingers all over it. It's got dirt. It's got grass. You can't even see the grooves. They're caked with gunk. And I send them over to the club cleaning station and say, go clean that club. Because there's no way we can be consistent if we don't have a consistently clean surface. So our KISS segment, Keep It Simple Strano, is really easy. You want to be consistent. Keep your clubs clean. As you practice, stop and clean them. And that way, when you hit the ball, you won't have any interference from a chunk of dirt, from a blade of grass, or whatever. Stay tuned. We got more great stuff coming here on the Golf Kingdom to help your game. You want a golf tip that will really make this game easier? OK, here's mine. The fastest way to get good is by finding a great coach. And the fastest way to find that person is through GolfChannelAcademy.com. It'll match you up with the best coaches in your area. And now you can even schedule a new student assessment. So, what are you waiting for? Schedule a training session with your local coach, Rob Strano, from Strano Golf Academy in Destin, Florida at StranoGolf.com. Fitness time again in the Golf Kingdom, and fitness fun always involves Tiffany Tracy over in Houston, Texas with GFX Fitness and Orange Whip. Tiffany, how you doing today? Great to see you. Yeah, so good to see you too, Rob. So you've got, looks like you're leaning on the light speed there, and you got the power That's peel. Right. What are we working on with our players? Tell us. We are going to be working on impact today. So I'm excited to introduce to you guys the light speed. Now, 
First, you're going to be hinging over into your golf stance setup. Next, I'm going to have you go into impact. So you're going to move those hips, aim towards the target. Your handle is going to be a little ahead of that club, and you're going to take it back into your backswing and then to your finish, trying to mimic that same position that you started off with. With the impact, And that is the tip of the week, Rob. That's great. I love that little tip about open up into, into your impact position, preset that impact, go back with the light speed, and then whoosh it right on through and get right back to that spot. That'll really right. help you out there. Get yourself understanding where do I need to be at impact and then dynamically mm -hmm. move it. Tiffany, when you exactly. do that with your players that you train, do you find their dynamics and their movement, they, did they get it real quick and get going quick? So I always teach my clients or players to first move, do the movement slow before you speed things up. So that's why we had you set into that impact position. So feel what correct position feels like, then move into the full, the full swing. And yeah, absolutely. They're going to be moving more efficiently because now they're, they're positioning themselves in the correct swing planes um, at the correct posture and the, the result is then a more quick, more powerful, more fluid swing. I love it, Tiffany. Awesome. Great to see you again. And thanks for being with us here on the Golf Kingdom. Thanks for having me. That was great stuff from Tiffany Tracy out there in Houston with GFX Golf. Now, jump out there, Orange Whip. You can find the, the light speed there, the power peel, all their training packages, everything you need to get to be fitness ready to play your best golf. Okay. Talk nerdy, it's about science. It's about information, data. And we got some good stuff we're talking about. We're talking about centripetal force or centrifugal force. And what's most important to have at impact? Is it centripetal or centrifugal? Well, the question is, what are those things? I got some examples I'm gonna show you, and then I'm gonna explain how it pertains to impact and post-impact and a place that's really hard to get to in the golf swing, but if you can get there, you really improve. Let's go here to the 60 inch screen, and let's look at a couple little clips here. So here's clip number one. This is the hammer throw. Look at this guy spinning. Whoa, round and round and round and round and round. Look at him go, wow. Look at this next guy. You'll see the same thing. This is a discus throw, but look at him round and round and round. Man, throwing it. He's just spinning and spinning and spinning. So that is centripetal force center pulling, the center pulls him around. He's spinning his center, and that's pulling the hammer and the discus around. That's CP, center pulling or centripetal force. Let's talk about centrifugal force. Watch this now. This is my golf swing, and you can see after impact, my arms extend. Now you're gonna see it in slow motion here as we come again. It's gonna come in slow motion. As I come through the hit, my arms extend. So back swing as I come through, my arms extend as I go through. Now, we're gonna watch it again and we're gonna freeze this frame right after impact. So as I come down, you're gonna see impact's gonna line up and then my arms are gonna extend, so back swing. Dang, this swing was good, and bang, there's the finish of the swing. Now look at, see how extended my arms are there? That trail arm is nice and straight right there. This arm is extending and stretching. I'm not pulling my arms in, CP, center pulling, pulling my arms in, my arms are extending, extending, centrifugal force, CF, think about it this way, center fleeing, my arms flee my center. Now, if I'm swinging at you here, as I come through, the wrong move would be arms pulling, CP, moving this way, elbow bends, lead arm bends, I want to come through, and as like I said, it's CF, it's center fleeing, like I'm throwing my arms at the camera, I've got a grip in my hand. If you ever throw a golf club, you throw a golf club, you extend your arms straight ahead. If I'm gonna throw this grip, I'm gonna throw it like that, straight ahead, look at my arms extend. That is center fleeing. That's the extension you want in your golf swing. Work hard on trying to keep the lead arm extended past impact. Don't get that chicken wing or that center pulling action. Your body's turning this way, it's going that way. Well, we don't want our arms to go with the, the body. We want our arms to come here and extend down the line as we go through. So, talk nerdy. We talk the science of centripetal force or centrifugal force. 
and you learned you want CF, centrifugal center fling, to have the right impact and the right extension after you hit the ball. In the golf kingdom, we bring you the best guests, and it's aim point time. My buddy Mark Sweeney, right here. Mark from aim point's got some great stuff to help you understand putting. Take it away, Mark. Hey, Rob. Thanks for having me on Golf Kingdom. A uh, common mistake I see quite often with uh, amateur golfers or even pro golfers is that they always want to blame their mechanics, their putting mechanics for when they're missing putts. So if they're not making enough or if they're missing putts left or right, they usually go straight for mechanics. And they think that's kind of a fix-all, that if they fix something in the way they move the putter that they're suddenly going to make more putts. Uh, that's usually actually the last thing I look at. I always find that if you have to start with read, you have to make sure that it's an appropriate read and that somebody's aiming in the right place. Um, and then you go to alignment and then you can eventually get into mechanics and speed control. But I've had a lot of people that as soon as you get their read and their alignment fixed, they actually, their stroke will start to self-correct. Because they're aiming at the right target, um, they don't have to create compensations and push or pull the putt or change their speed. Um, so we always start there first. So I would caution you as golfers to always think that uh, it's a mechanical problem or a stroke problem or even an equipment problem if you're missing too many putts. Don't blame your putter first and just go out and buy new putters. Really make sure that your fundamentals are sound. Make sure you're reading the putt correctly first and that your alignment is fundamentally sound. And then if, only, if and only then, um, if you have problems making putts, then you can maybe look into some mechanics. I uh, hope that helps and uh, good luck putting. That was awesome stuff from Mark Sweeney, Aimpoint. Hey, do 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 do. Google Aimpoint Golf. Get out there and you'll find some more super things to help your putting. But you know what Mark gave you? He gave you a list to go down to check what you look at first, green reading, before you jump to mechanics to help your putting. So Aimpoint Golf, Mark Sweeney. Thanks for joining us here in the Golf Kingdom. We have got the Cerebro helmet on earpiece going in so I can connect with your brains out there. I hear you guys, there we go, we're all connected. Our golf brains are locked in. We're talking mental game and we're gonna talk about the eyes. As tour players, we always say, I can look into the eyes of another player and know what I'm seeing. As tour players, we also talk about, we can see through each other's eyes. I can see through the eyes of Watson, of Arnold Palmer, of Nicholas, of Woods. We can all see through each other's eyes. So. The saying it's the eyes are the window to the soul is very true, but what does that mean? So Daredevil, come to the big screen here. Now, what I want you to see is this. I've got a picture of some eyes. I want you to look at these eyes here. This is from a friend of mine who won the Masters. Look again at his eyes on the bigger view. Look at the focus. Look at the determination. Look at how strong his eyes look in that. So what you got to understand is when you play a golf shot, your eyes lock, you don't blink, you don't breathe, you don't swallow. All those things your body does involuntarily, blinking, swallowing, all that stuff, it stops, okay? You don't blink, that's a key. If I see someone blinking over a golf shot, it's like someone smacking you in the face a bunch of times. We can't have that, we have to be under control of our eyes and be focused. So when you get involved in a golf shot, you're completely focused and you don't blink. Coming back down to that low view, it'll look like this, so if I'm hitting a golf shot, as you can see, I'm looking, I will never blink. I'll look back down at the ball, I'll look back up, and I won't blink. If I'm hitting a putt, I'm looking at the line of the putt. As I get in there, I am not blinking. I'm so focused on what I'm doing, I'm not blinking. My eyes lock. So what you want to do is focus on controlling your eyes, controlling your blinking. Get focused, lock your eyes, and you'll find that your mental structure won't be so jumpy, won't be so all over the place. You'd be locked in and you'd be controlling your eyes and in control of your mental game. Alexa, open Golf Kingdom. Welcome to Golf Kingdom. Here's your golf tip of the day. Welcome to the Golf Kingdom. I am your host, Rob Strano, and here is today's Pro Pointer. Alexa, stop. If you want more pro pointers from me via your Amazon enabled skill at the Golf Kingdom, be sure to go there and enable it. Every day I give you a new tip free with your Amazon enabled device. So enable the Golf Kingdom and you'll get a tip from me, your host Rob Strano, every day. That's not quite right. And 
if we're gonna do a putting service announcement, things have gotta be just perfect. Nope, it's too hot, that's too cold. Let me see how this one is. Yeah, that one's just right. So my question is, the three bears, Goldilocks, too hot, too cold, just right. How can just right help your putting? And that's our putting service announcement, our PSA. Now, I can't bring the three bears in here. So how do I talk about the three bears in putting? Well, we can go with the bears, huh? We'll go with the bears in putting. So come on over here and let's look at this. Daredevil, come to the big screen. So we got the bears and we're gonna talk putting, putting service announcement and just right. And the question is, how do we get the speed just right in putting so that it's not too hard, not too soft, and just right? Because speed is really important. If we hit a putt on line, meaning I'm gonna hit it right at the camera, but I'm seven feet short, well, it's not a very good putt. We need to hit the ball the right speed on the right line. So speed is the most important thing. So here's what we gotta work on here and look, understand is, if I'm gonna putt to the Golf Kingdom flag on the ground, I wanna get the speed right, but how do I dial that in? Maybe it starts with the practice stroke. So as I get set up to hit this putt, I'm gonna putt it three feet there, and my first little practice stroke is gonna to be too little. The next one will be too much. Now I'm going for just right. There we go, that's just right. So now I hit it, and that rolls right to the flag, stops almost on top of it, and it's just right. So you gotta love that thought. I'm gonna to go too soft, too hard, and just right. You can do it when you're practicing too. So I can bring a ball back and hit three putts to that target. I can go, first one's gonna to be too soft, second one will be too hard, and now the third one, I'm gonna to try to be between them and go just right. Pretty good, just right. So the bears, the three bears, the three putts, Think about this, as you're trying to dial in that speed and get it just right, we want to go, just like the cups, just right. We want to go too hard, too soft, and then that third little practice stroke, get it just right, and see if that improves your speed on the greens. Let's get into short game and chipping. It's an area that I get lots of questions about at the academy. I have players coming all the time with this problem. It takes them two chips to get on the green. Yeah, you can cover 440 yards in two shots, and then you cover 20 yards in five shots because it takes you two chips and three putts. How do we eliminate that two chipping stuff? If you're doing that four or five times around, that's four or five shots. If you're shooting in the low 90s, now you're shooting in the 80s if we fix this chipping thing. Let's talk about it here. So I'm gonna grab my tailor-made high toe wedge. I'm gonna hit a couple shots here, then give you the drills to help you get this. So when I chip, my hands and arms are relaxed. That's what allows me to waggle the club and let the club move smoothly. So a chip shot right here, my hands and arms are relaxed, little waggles, and I chip it and clip it right off the turf here in the studio. So that's what happens when you're loose and relaxed. The mistake is you grab the club too tight, your arms get stiff and tight, and as you go back, you bottom out behind the ball and blade it and chunk it across the green. The other thing at mistake is you get relaxed and then as you go back, you tighten up and the club snatches and moves quick. So here's relaxed. I go back and tighten up and you can see the club jump and I get stabby with my impact. My swing is jumpy and then I stab at it coming down and that usually leads to those bladed hot ones that go across the green. So once again, we wanna hold this club relaxed and soft throughout the shot. What are a couple drills to feel that? Well, you know what these things are? These are everywhere. These are water bottles. Take a water bottle, drink it till it's empty. Practice this at home. Take the water bottle and grip it and take little practice swings and don't make the water bottle crackle. If I go back and squeeze it, I make that annoying crackling sound. So keep it smooth right here. Don't squeeze that water bottle and make it crackle. Another thing you can use a little more daring is grab your tube of toothpaste, open the lid of it, and take some swings and don't squeeze the toothpaste out. You could even put that club up against it right here, just like this, with your right hand, and take swings and not squeeze any toothpaste out. So watch me here. I'm not afraid to do this. I'll get set up, toothpaste there, nice and smooth. Clip it off there, not a drop of toothpaste. So toothpaste, bottle of water. Grab them and use them to calm down your short game.
Well, it's time to rise, and I'm rising into this because this is all about body language. And what's interesting is I had a player the other day for a lesson, and I called them a dead body puppet. They were walking around the lesson, and they looked like just a dead body puppet. They were just kind of walking around like this. And I'm like, oh my gosh, we've got to work on posture. We've got to work on body language. One time on tour, I was playing an event. I was over in Mississippi, and we'd played four or five holes. And I had putted out. I was leaning against my bag, just kind of watching our guys putt. And this other guy's caddy comes over next to me, and he kind of elbows me. And I look at him, I go, what's up? He goes, hey, I just want to let you know, if you ever need a caddy, I'll caddy for you anytime. And I said, really? What makes you say that? And I'm thinking he's seen me for four or five holes. And it's not like I'm tearing it up. I might be, maybe it was one under par. He goes, I like the way you walk. You look like a guy in a pool hall who's getting ready to clear the table. You walk like a pool shark. I kind of like that because I can't see myself. I don't know what my body language looks like, but he watched me and he loved my attitude. He loved my swagger. He loved my body language. So as you walk, Carry yourself tall, shoulders back, chest out. You know, it's a cliche. We hear about it all the time. But you know what? When you enter a room and you enter it like this, you're going to own that room and be confident whether you're on the golf course or out there in public doing something where you want to walk in with a presence. Do this, and trust me, you will feel more confident about everything you do. Well, we're wrapping up another episode here in the Golf Kingdom. As always, if you want to go back and see some of our past shows, download the Amazon Fire TV channel, or our Roku channel, you can see all the past episodes there. Also, if you have an Alexa device, enable the Golf Kingdom skill, where you'll get a tip from me, your host, Rob Strano, every day. Thanks again for joining me here in the Golf Kingdom.